The Real Ukraine, as seen from the Café of Free Spirits, by Joe Lindsley. Lviv, Ukraine. I've been in Ukraine every single day of Russia's war, reporting faithfully Mondays through Fridays on Chicago's WGN radio. From Kharkiv to Odessa, Zaporizhia to Bakhmut, I've seen the vast tapestry of a nation in turmoil, but I can most succinctly show you the spectrum of Ukrainian resistance by bringing you to a single place during the course of one afternoon and evening. It's a cobblestone lane known as Vimenska, or Armenian Street, nestled in the car-free centre of the western city of Lviv. On one side stands the Café Facet, or Cool Dude, and on the opposite, its counterpart, Fachetka, or Cool Dudette. The conversations I recount are actual, though condensed into one day, with most names altered to preserve privacy while sharing real emotions, because, well, in war, we don't have time for the fake. So, Davai, as the Ukrainians say. Let's go. Part 1. Tables full of people clinking glasses spill out onto the narrow, cobbled lane. Street musicians play their jovial tunes as small crowds sing along, children frolic freely, and laughter weaves through the air. Foreign volunteers and journalists newly arrived often ask, where's the war in Lviv? But it's here. As I turn onto Vimenska Street after my daily radio broadcast on a sunny post-rain Friday, I see my friend Taras having a smoke. He's standing on one leg because he lost the other in battle. I haven't seen him since, and I don't quite know what to say. You don't know when you'll see people again, especially in a time of war, but still I think I'll talk to him later, and I duck into fat set. Facet occupies the entry hall of a 17th century building, narrow and tall, graced by a Virgin Mary statue carved into its facade. Frosted glass doors, nearly spanning the width of the establishment, showcase two mustachioed gentlemen sipping from tulip glasses. As I enter, I hear Credence Clearwater revivals melancholic yet hopeful, long as I can see the light. Die Bosche, says Natalia, her silver hair framing a youthful face. Die Bosche, I reply. May God grant. Natalia, a Ukrainian native now living in Canada, sits beside a female friend. Locals prefer sitting side by side. She had just returned from a supply delivery mission to Chasiv Yar, a small Donbass town subjected to relentless Russian shelling. How was it? I ask. Just terrible, she replies in English, tears in her eyes. Serhii, the barman from an occupied Donbass city, calls out to me. Hello, Joe. Don't forget, Luca left your bulletproof vest in the kitchen. For when you need it, adds Julia, a waitress hurrying by with a plate of Daruni potato pancakes. But she stops. A foreigner, likely British, a journalist, volunteer, or perhaps just a war tourist, is marking up the paper menu with his pen. I think I'll order this, he says, trying to hand Julia the menu. Uh, could you please refrain from writing on our menus? Thank you. Julia shakes her head and carries the plate outside. Slava, Yesusu, Christu. My friend Slava enters, greeting everyone. Glory to Jesus Christ. Slava, Navidka, say Serhii from the bar and Natalia from the bench. Glory to him indeed. These are standard greetings in Lviv. Slava, once a tech entrepreneur, is now a soldier, a decision he made on February 24th, 2022. The business ideas we had once brainstormed are now buried under the weight of the war. He's on a quick leave, still attempting to keep his IT firm afloat. We stand at the café's bar, a modest area in the back with no stools, just enough space for a few to gather. I'm going to need something strong, Slava states. Not wine or beer, something potent. Will you join me? I wasn't in the mood for a strong drink, but I agreed. You don't know when you'll see people again. Let's have an author's drink, Slava suggests. Author's drinks, what do you call that in America? It's like a house specialty, I explain, but I like the Ukrainian way of describing it. The maker of the drink is its author, its writer. Yeah, Slava agrees. It's not just house drinks, but a work of art, a story. Out of two dozen options, Seri pours something bitter and strong, 
reminiscent of Italian fenet. Meanwhile, a Ukrainian version of Bella Ciao, that Italian protest tune, starts playing on the radio. A woman sings of Ukrainians using American javelins against the Russian invaders. Zaperemohu, Slava and I echo, to victory. Before I drink, I tap my glass to the bar. Slava does the same, then asks, Man, why do you always tap your glass like that? It's Irish tradition. First, we clink glasses to acknowledge those around us, and then before guzzling our drinks, we tap, I do so, to acknowledge those not here with us, especially the dead. I like this custom, to remember the dead, especially now, Slava says. Memories is all we have. We have current situations and our plans, but the only thing we really have is memory. I nod. So, how was it, man? How was it out there? Ah, Joe, man. At first it was pure terror. I thought I was gonna die. But after that first time under fire, you learn to adjust. You know you're just gonna get used to it. It's work. Soon enough, I was throwing grenades and feeling a real part of it. That's been your goal from day one, I say, shaking Slava's hand. You never backed away from the fight. Anton, a sculptor in his thirties, quietly approaches the bar. Lately, he had often been drunk here, but always sadly, calmly. In hushed Ukrainian, he points discreetly across the table from Natalia, where now a man sits with his head bowed low, bringing borscht to his mouth with a methodical precision amidst a sad tableau of empty glasses. He's departing tomorrow, going to the front, Anton says. Nodding, Slava orders a round of the author's lighter shots, a delicate spirit infused with the essence of roses. We approach the new recruit and share a drink with him. I am relieved as his comrades soon join the gathering. He is not facing this departure alone. I should have known. It's near impossible to be alone in Ukraine. Davai, I propose to Slava. Let's go across the street. Two. We exit into the radiant sunlight and breezy air. Tables sprawl onto the cobblestone street, and pedestrians bustle about in the car-free heart of the city. At the far end of the block, a street musician, circled by a small standing crowd, serenades with a popular melody. At nearby tables, I see a cluster of foreigners, their ages spanning decades, volunteers from the front-line kitchen having a post-shift drink. Their modest operation, nestled within an ancient courtyard, churns out a daily provision of 20,000 fresh, locally sourced meals, from borscht to protein bars, dehydrated and sealed, destined for the warriors in the trenches. We approach the crew, gathered around several circular tables with glasses of wine. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world. Come on now. Oh, it's sad. Oh, you are. Let's eat this photo.